G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome to my channel. Well, I found an interesting story here. Chainalysis partners with Aussie cryptocurrency firms. So this is for all the Australian viewers out there. Uh, me being Australian, I like to cater to them a little bit on occasions. All right, Chainalysis, the blockchain analysis company, today announced partnerships with leading Australian-based payments provider, Assembly Payments, and cryptocurrency exchanges, CoinSpot and CoinJar to improve compliance standards. So uh, I'm a fan of CoinSpot and I put out a video before uh, earlier about you know how to use CoinSpot and join up and if you're interested in using CoinSpot there's a link down below uh, in my about section uh, that you can uh, go and join Coin, CoinSpot if you like. Uh, they're who I use. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan. I like them. But anyway, compliance. Compliance is an issue. A lot of people, you know, they don't want us to be over-regulated and all the rest of it. But look, the facts are, if cryptocurrencies is to succeed and become, you know, the standard, we need to have KYC and all the rest of it. There needs to be compliance and there needs to be standards. So we'll move on. CoinSpot and CoinJar will use Chainalysis KYT, so that's Know Your Transaction, and Chain, uh, Chainalysis Reactor for uh, transaction monitoring and enhanced, and enhanced due diligence. Assembly payments will use Chainalysis uh, Cryptos, the industry's reference director for cryptocurrency services and their on-chain activity, to make more informed decisions about the cryptocurrency business they work with and monitor risky activity. activity. Chainalysis data shows that cryptocurrency volumes in Australia are now hovering around $1 billion in monthly activity, double the monthly volumes from late 2019. So it's on the rise again. The growth of the market reinforces the increasing importance of proper compliance to ensure the safe and responsible adoption of cryptocurrency by exchanges like CoinSpot and CoinJar in the region. Assembly Payments, a leading Australian payments provider, is a leader in settling compliance standards and requires its customer to demonstrate their commitment to compliance as well. So, you know, again, I understand we don't want to be over-regulated and things like that, but this is what makes me uh, so bullish on Bitcoin and the crypto space in general. Uh, you know, compliance is here. There's standards that have to be met. And it's things like this that, uh, you know, basically have it in my mind that we are 100% going to be, uh, not going to be, are in a bull run uh, and things are going to uh, head towards mass adoption in the future. All of this says it. Now, whether we have mass adoption in this bull run, I'm not too sure. I think it might sort of come in the, the run after. It's not to say that we won't have, uh, you know, some adoption uh, by the wider community in this bull run. I definitely think we will but I'm not sure if we'll have that true mass adoption. We still have to get, you know, the big retail, the big, sorry, the big industrial players in and the big industrial players haven't really got in yet. Uh, and then retail will follow after that. We've got the early uh, institutional adopters there in, don't get me wrong, but we don't have really big institutions in yet. But speaking of that, we go over here. So corporate crypto reserve status software firm Snapper swaps 40% of its cash for reserves in Bitcoin. So this is where it's happening. It's starting to happen. People are, you know, not just people, institutions and businesses and all the rest of it, they are now, they are now scared of what's happening to the dollar. And I'm scared of what's happening to the dollar. You know, it's being printed into oblivion, particularly the US dollar, but that's the reserve currency. So anyone that thinks, you know, oh, well, you know, particularly those who don't live in the US and think, oh, well, it's not going to affect me, it will. There, uh, the US dollar is the reserve currency for the world. If that gets printed to ob oblivion, it affects us all. And that's why a number of countries are trying to move away from the US dollar, uh, particularly China uh, and Russia. They're uh, yeah, moving away from it where they can. So uh, again, another big company. So we've already had, um, oh God, what was the company that got in the other day? Oh. Sorry, you'll have to forgive me, I've forgotten. But anyway, I put here, a trickle at first and soon a flood. Watch for more companies to follow suit. Now, this is uh, my Twitter account. Sorry, I'm struggling for words there. Uh, if you want to go follow me on Twitter, so it's at the number one under slash and then man's journey. I put out fairly regular stuff uh, and, you know, 
yeah, it's just a good way to sort of keep up to date with me uh, and what I'm doing and things that are happening uh, on a more real-time sort of basis if you have Twitter. Obviously, I only put out one video a day on YouTube and, and you know, you have to wait for that video to come out. So if you're interested in, you know, more sort of up-to-date stuff, uh, for, give me a follow on Twitter uh, and you'll see a lot more stuff on there. I can go, ah, that's right, we'll come back to that later. Now, as I said, what is really spurring me on uh, is stories like this that, you know, mass adoption is happening and why I'm so bullish. We can go over here and here we have on the Forbes site. Bitcoin in the early stages of a bull market. So Forbes, uh, fairly well-renowned sort of, uh, you know, reporting on a network, I guess, you know. Once upon a time, you might call them, you know, like a newspaper article. I'm not really sure what the exact term for them are now. Uh, financial, you know, reviews and all the rest of it. But they have had a number of stories out for a while now talking about Bitcoin, you know, being in the early stages of a bull run. Now, while they aren't, you know, exactly cryptocurrency geniuses they are somewhat fairly early adopters you know they've had you know stories that you know really used to knock it uh, back in the day and now they've slowly got on board uh, and now they're a much better yeah sort of yeah much more crypto friendly than what they sort of were once upon a time and as we say uh, see here bitcoin has struggled through august after leaping higher at the end of july the bitcoin price has repeatedly tried and failed to gain a footing over twelve thousand dollars per bitcoin but is currently stuck trading around eleven thousand eight hundred uh, i think it's actually a little bit lower at the moment but they basically go on to say that places like uh binance uh, Coinbase, uh, you know and crypto.com and things like that they've had so many new uh people signing up to their platforms that what else can that really tell you that you know numbers are starting to soar and new wallets are being opened all the time it's happening this is where it starts it's still only small in the grand scheme of things but it will start to build and build and build and the thing with bitcoin uh you know on the rise it's that old saying you know a rising tide lifts all ships so we go over here uh, news BTC, XRP is poised to almost double in the coming weeks. Now, I won't go through this whole story with you, but basically what it says is that that's only really going to happen if Bitcoin uh, gets on a bit of a run. Uh, you know, how much Bitcoin is going to go up, we're not exactly sure, but I'm guessing we could say that if it gets to that sort of $12,500 level, uh, they are expecting... Bitcoin, uh, sorry, XRP, to roughly get to about 50 cents, you know, 47 cents, 50 cents thereabouts, you know, which will almost sort of double its price from where it is now. I think it's currently sitting at around 28, 27 cents. But, you know, very interesting for any XRP holders. Uh, I got some and I was lucky enough, I think I got in at about 22 cents or something like that. Now that's US cents, not Australian cents. I paid a little bit more. Uh, so my XRP holdings have done fairly well. But, you know, we haven't seen the real big massive pumps from XRP that we're used to in previous bull runs. We can go over here, though, and we can see that the market cap is down again a little bit. So $376 billion, And we just really kind of range uh, within that sort of, you know, $370 to $380 billion, nearly pushing $390 billion. And on occasions, we still drop down into $360 billion as well. But on the overall... It's on the uptrend. And as we can see, so Bitcoin's down. We'll just uh, refresh this. And we'll see if the price is still 11.5. Might have changed a little bit. Could have gone down. Not still roughly sitting about the same. So there we go, $11,500. And as I said before, it really is just sitting uh, within a range. And we go over here and have a look at the chart. And we've been here for quite some time. We've been here for three weeks, roughly between sort of 11,000, you know, 300, 400 to around about 11,800, 11,900. And, you know, at, at the moment, from everything I'm seeing on the charts, and again, you know, the sort of low volume, there's not a lot of volume here. I suspect this is going to play out a little bit like this. We're probably going to trade sideways for a while. It's going to take some time to really build momentum for us to push up to that next level. But I could be completely wrong. I 100% could be completely wrong. And I've been wrong before. As I said, I, I, I wasn't, I was suspecting that we might come down to around the sort of $11,000, sort of $200 range. Uh, and, you know, 
kind of bounce off that. We haven't done that so far. I was predicting that sort of more over here. So we'll have to wait and see. It's not to say that it couldn't. And again, I'm really thinking it's probably going to come down and bounce off one of our key indicators. The 50-day moving average, 100 or 200 at some stage. But whether it does it soon or not, I don't know. But this will sort of slowly start to rise. And if we just keep you know, trading in this zone, it's someday the 50-day moving average is going to come up with that. And that might be you know, the thing that makes it bounce higher. But again, it could be the thing that makes it bounce lower. Who really knows? But last, sorry, wrong one, last but not least, there is still gains to be made. So not a lot sort of happening in here. It all seems fairly small. But we go over to the 24-hour uh, chart. And look, Kasama, 50%. Aave, big news for Aave. So Aave have now uh, opened a fiat gateway for uh, UK uh, people. Over in the UK, they can now just buy straight into DeFi without having to you know, buy cryptocurrencies and swap them and all the rest of it. Just put straight cash in. So they've been licensed uh, over in the UK. So that's really, really big news. Uh, and that's already started to show with the 22% pump. So, you know, massive news. And it may well just be the start of things uh, for Aave as well, if they can get regulated in other places. Because generally, if you can get regulated in, you know, one of the bigger countries, i.e. the US, uh, you know, uh, the UK, you know, uh, parts of Asia and other parts of Europe and things like that. Usually the rest generally kind of follow. But also Polkadot, uh, it's on quite a surge. I'm kicking myself I didn't get some Polkadot earlier. But anyway, that's the way it goes. Synthetics Network, again, they just keep going up and up and up. There definitely is retracements at times. But uh, yeah, they're my number one pick and they're my coin that has performed uh, the best, uh, followed by Carver, and then Aave wouldn't be too far off either. So yeah, there's definitely gains to be made, while not so much uh, in the bigger coins, but definitely in the smaller ones, which is why I recommend, you know, get out there, do some research, and find some really, uh, you know, at least what you consider to be good altcoins anyway. Don't just randomly pick one, and definitely, you know, Strongly consider not jumping in something that's already pumped 57% or 51%. It's probably going to pull back uh, some of that 50% over the next few days. So be careful and particularly even here, there we go, 103% in the last seven days. Chances are within the next seven days, uh, there might be a fairly drastic pullback. Not guaranteed. Look, it could continue to go up and up and up. But as I said, when I am looking to buy, I'm looking for things that are red. Good projects still, but when they've had a good pullback, that's the best time to get in. You're constantly going to get the best for your money. You buy this, you know, you may have to wait another seven or 14 days after it has a pullback before you start to uh, show even again. So, yeah, just some things to think about and just my personal tips, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But I do like to get on here and talk about crypto and see if I can provide some insight and, you know, some hopefully some words of wisdom uh, for people who are unsure and, you know, trying to learn the space and things like that. But I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on some of these game trains here and I'll see you next time.